So I'm going to start at the end. I'm going to show you what it should look like. You'll have two of these, obviously, two profiles running the uh, front and back on top of the 160 sections. And then you'll have your seat slider and then you'll have your seat bracket. So uh, just so you know the orientation, this is the front. So you'll have one that mirrors this on the other side. So this would be the front, sorry, the right side as you're sitting in the seat. This is the front of the seat. This is the back of the seat. And you have two of these and you'll have the seat bar slider as well. And what that does is that fits onto those pins there. And then when you pull up at the front, so this bar curves slightly upwards, when you pull up at the front, that will move this mechanism down. The front will come up and it will unlock the locking pins inside the mechanism. And that will give you the, uh, the ability to move the seat forward and back. Okay. So what I'll do now is I'll strip this down and I'll show you building it from, um, from all of the individual components just so you can see how that works. Okay, so this is how to put together your Sparco seat slider. So you have two of these, the rails, obviously. Um, these are the pieces that mount to the rig. And you'll also have one of these, which is the adjustment bar. So you've already seen it together in one full piece and I'll show you how it actually goes together piece by piece. It is a little bit tricky. It's probably, um, for me at least, with my fat fingers, is one of the most fiddliest jobs um, of putting the rig together. But once it's done, uh, you shouldn't need to adjust it, just tighten it. Um, and obviously after some use, tighten it just to make sure that it's fully secured. So the kit from Pro Simrig comes with um, a bag of, as it says here, assorted seat mounting bolts. Um, all seats are slightly different, um, so you may need some different ones. Um, that, that happens rarely, but um, this will fit most seats, including all of the Sparkos and Altex that we come across. Um, you have 20 millimeter M8 bolt. You have a 16 millimeter M8 bolt, so you'll have. Um, four of each of those. You'll also have four 12mm uh, M8 bolt, um, four M8 nuts, four M8 washers and four M8 T-slot nuts, which if you've got this far you've probably uh, used a few of those already. So obviously we have our slider which we'll get to know pretty well. We've got our seat bracket. Now, this is the LTEC seat bracket. You may be using a slightly different one, um, but pretty much they all work the same way. And obviously the profile. So this is the 580 or 500 millimeter section that runs um, front to back on the rig. And this is where our seat slider is gonna sit. So, First things first, you need to know the orientation of these. So if you can see here, um, there are two distinctly different sides to this. You have this piece which has the um, thinner section in the middle um, and it has two holes at each end. And on this one it has a slightly longer slot and two holes. Okay. Now. The way that these are oriented, if we say that the this way, so to my left is towards the front of the rig and to my right is the rear of the rig, this is how it sits. So you have the flat piece on top with the two holes and the long slot. And this piece underneath is what goes on the rig. Now the other thing around the orientation is the mechanism here. Uh, this is designed to go this way. So this is the front of the rig, this is the back of the rig, so notice that it's smooth here and then you've got all of this mechanism right here, okay? So first things first, 
make some space okay we won't need the 20 millimeter bolt for the time being uh, we also won't need the 16 millimeter bolt or the nut or the washer all we're going to need is the t-slot nut and the 12 millimeter um, m8 bolt so here's our profile put the t-slot nut into the profile now obviously you can do this in a couple of ways you can push them in at the ends it's always better to go ball bearing first like that or if you've already got things elsewhere you can push them down into the top of the slot as well and just maneuver them into place which is easier said than done sometimes just have to just adjust it slightly there we go it's sitting properly now Okay, so one T slot nut down one end and one T slot nut down the other. Okay, so like I said, this is the bottom, and you can see here that it is going to be a little bit tricky because you've got to get into these holes here. Okay. Now, obviously, there's multiple holes because these are designed to be pretty much universal fitment. So it doesn't matter too much which ones um, that we use. Obviously, it's going to be easier to use the one that's exposed on this end. And just about here, you can see the holes underneath as well. Okay, so let's get these into place. So hopefully you can see that there. Got my T-slot and that. Got the end of the seat slider right there. And I'm just gonna drop that 12 millimeter M8 bolt just down in there. You can cross the any bolt and nut combination. So it's best to go anti-clockwise first. And then when you feel it's seat, you could just spin it up like that. So I'm just going to do that loosely for the time being because I may want to adjust where along this rail this seat slider can go. Okay. Obviously there's some play in the hole as it is because this is a slot at this end. And then this one, a little bit more tricky. You can expand these out, but to be honest, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. line up now like I said can be a little bit fiddly okay there we go okay so that is that piece done okay it's only loose at the moment I'll come back and tie that up later um, when I'm happy with the positioning. Okay, so that's that bit done. The next stage of this obviously is to fit our side mount onto here as well. So um, again, this bit is a little bit fiddly as well. Um, just so you know the correct orientation of this remember this is the front of the rig this is the back of the rig and these seat mounts are designed to have the adjustment adjustment slot at the front and this piece at the back so these are just the, the round holes okay so this is where your seat mounts on the, on the side of the seat if you're on a uh, side mounted seat now if you're on a bottom mounted seat obviously yeah, and, and there are a fair few out there um, but we don't sell any bottom mounted seats we're all on the on the side mounts but um, if you do have one like if you're coming for a play seat or something like that you'll need to put the bolt up from underneath these sections here into the bottom of the seat okay and obviously depending on the depth of the holes and the size of the um, the, the holes and everything else you may need slightly different fitment um, but with what you've got in the kit you should be able to find a combination that works 
so back to the side mounted option so these go like that like I said um, you won't get complete coverage of the seat slider okay this is a lot of um, material anyway remember that these are all designed um, to go into race cars you know pulling a huge amount of g-force um, and uh, having to withstand all kinds of torture so in a sim rig um, this is more than enough contact um, and, and enough material purchase to uh, do a good job so I'll explain the concept here so need a couple of other things out of the kit so we're going to use two lots of these okay so 16 millimetre M8 bolt, M8 nut, M8 washer. And the neatest way of doing this, as in the cleanest when it's fitted to your rig, is to have the nut, sorry, this the, the bolt drop down like that. Okay. Um, and it is typically the easiest to do. Um, rather than the other way around because unless you've got low profile hex keys you're not going to get them in the end so so again this is a little bit fiddly best to orient it towards yourself um, now what i found is if you use an eight millimeter allen key this is quite handy Okay, so you won't use this for doing up any of the bolts, but what you can do is you can slide this in here. So then it gives you a little bit of a surface to put your nut and your washer down. So obviously washer towards the metal material and then the nut to clamp it in place. Okay. And then all I do is poke that along right there and hopefully you can see in here we've got the washer and then the nut and then this little handy contraption here so this nut is going to drop down inside there Get this to where you want it. You obviously want it as central as possible. Be careful that you don't move this too much, otherwise you'll lose your nut. Okay, you may just need to push down on the eight millimeter just to get enough purchase. Be careful. Okay. So that is on very, very loosely at the moment. Okay, and um, another trick with these eight millimeters, again, this is not the correct use for the tool, but it is useful. Now, obviously at this stage, it looks kind of like that. So you'll see that the nut is not tight in here. Okay, you can see some thread. Okay, now what I found really useful with these M8s, if you haven't got a spanner that is the right width, although you should, um, is just to push it down the side till it's on the flat piece. And then what you can do is you can tighten that up, and this will actually give purchase, and you can actually push to one side and it will just hold that nut in place. Just a little trick just to get these initially nipped up you're not doing the full tightness using this now the other thing to mention here is um, the position within this slot so you can see that there is some adjustment side to side so best thing to do because again this piece is wider than the profile so profile is 40 millimeters this piece is slightly wider than that 
is to actually put the bolt outboard and then to move this inboard. So remember this is the middle of the rig, this is the going towards the outside of the rig. So to get more weight inboard and to get more weight going through the profile, make sure that it's in this position right here. I just hold that. Okay. So that is tight enough now. And it should, if you've done it out tightly, look something like that. Okay. Good. And then it's just a simple case of doing the one on the back. So remember, mechanism, front, slot, front, flat, back, hole, back. So just another case of doing that one and then remembering that the other side is going to be the other orientation. So in Blue Peter fashion, if you know what that is, we've got another one here. Okay, so front of the rig, so this will be the right hand side. This is the front of the rig now on this one, and this will be the left hand side. So if you are sat in the rig, going to look something like that and then put a little space here here's your adjustment bar and that goes on those two pins there and you might just need a little bit of filling because they are supposed to be, I think, an interference fit because you don't actually do them up with any nuts or washers. Um, but you can see here two holes. Can you see here that this angles up? So typically this is angling up towards you. And then that will go in the other side as well. And then when you lift this up, both of these will unlock at the same time and you'll be able to move your seat backwards and forwards. Um, what else is there to say? You can put these on pedals as well, which is super useful if you've got um, different height uh, individuals or different length leg individuals using the rig. Um, but yeah, that's about it. And most other sliders are going to be quite similar in design. And uh, yeah, and that will just about do you. But any questions, give us a shout and uh, we'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much.